Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Sugar Rush Signature Event, checking in with 293Z Equinox. Uh, just one event uh, last week, coming into this signature event, looking phenomenal, and we can't wait to see how they do. We're going to be doing a full robot overview on this. Uh, a lot of mechanical cool features to talk about. Really like uh, how they're doing their uh, lift area. A big fan of flywheels as well, too. Uh, so let's dive more into this robot and learn about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Thrill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. All right, now let's start off talking about your uh, lift on it, talking more about the composition of it. Uh, and then you have a ratchet as well, too, we're going to be covering. Yeah, so we have a lift here geared uh, 1 to 7 with the 12 tooth gear and the 84 tooth gear. And then uh, you lift it up. So this one's all the way up. And then uh, we shoot off of here, off of our flywheel. And then we have a, like this rubber band here. And then on this side, it helps us hang. Like helps the lift move down easier and helps us hang. And then also for our hang, when the program turns off, our motor turns off. So if like, we just turn the motor off, the lift will fall back down, fall back up, sorry, and we won't be able to hang. So we have a ratchet here. Do you want to act like that? Oh, sorry, hung butt. So the ratchet, basically, uh, now if he like moves the lift down, see, it's like ratcheting back here, and he physically cannot move the like lift back up, yeah. the arm back up. So that allows us to stay hung on the bar after the program turns off as well. Looking from uh, last week coming in here, were there any major changes in this uh, so far, or even from prior to that event that you made? Uh, well, we did. We changed our design on our wings because the like other design wasn't like working as well. So we changed it to this one, and we prioritized more um, pushing the balls like over the middle barrier rather than pushing the balls into the goal. So uh, we chose to do that just because like we thought it was like better for match play uh, rather than just like, pushing them into the goal alone. Also, talk to me about uh, your uh, flywheel design. I'd love to hear why did you choose to go with the flywheel? Is that what you've had the entire time? Did you do uh, anything else part of that? And of course, uh, we got to see a demonstration of it too. In, in the beginning of the in, beginning of the season, we started off with a regular flywheel with, on, without a lift, uh, and it was just an intake with the flywheel. And so we we never competed with that robot, however, because we saw that better robots and there's a more improving meta. So we originally. For our first competition, we put it on a lift, and put a flywheel on here, but that robot was a little too slow. Sure. So for our new robot, we put it, the lift a little further back, a little bit taller, and uh, we put a six to one geared flywheel instead of the chain flywheel because we increased the RPM that way. Because a lot of things with flywheel is that the friction decreases a lot of the speed that you can get, the distance it can make it. So we opted to gear it six to one. Yeah. So it's 3,600. In previous years, like spin up, we could use a direct flywheel with a little cartridge inside the motor, but we expand that this year. So we decided to just make it a geared six to one flywheel. And all the way up, uh, it can easily make it to the other side of the field. And uh, it can also, the reason we wanted a flywheel instead of slappable on a lift or a kicker uh, is because when you place the tri ball in, and you place a tri ball here, it can get a higher arc with people who have blockers. And for scales, when you put the lift all the way put the lift down, you put it all the way down, you can you can rapid fire them for scales and they all land around towards the goal. Yeah, so you get that really concentrated uh, areas pushing in. Can we see a demo of the flywheel in action? So when you're looking at from match loads on there, uh, how quickly can you do a match load? Is there any slowdown with the gearing that you have? Uh, we can place two uh, tri balls pretty quickly before it slows down slightly, but in that period we have another person placing it, so it speeds up just in time. And we can match load about 22 in like 20, maybe like 15 seconds ish. Sure, a pretty steady pace that goes through. We that. decide to be conservative due to our match strategy. Instead of giving away all the tri balls to the other team that they can push over and steal, we go a little conservative and save a little for the end of the match. 
makes a lot of sense. So we start talking about your uh, intake, Vincent. Talk to me more about uh, what's going on with that. Um, you know, I've seen this material before in a few different robots, but I'd love to hear more about how this uh, composition is working out for you on there. Any big changes you made, uh, especially uh, with your event win just a week ago? Uh, yeah. So um, in our first event, uh, we just had a rubber band roller, which got caught, which got entangled a bunch. So we decided to add this mesh over since we didn't have enough uh, flex wheels to change it to a flex wheel intake. And then um, originally we had like a custom like. Uh, plastic um gussets right here with like a C channel across here, but um like that kept on bending and snapping. So we decided to replace it with a like high strength axle drilled through, which gave it a lot more strength. Um, we decided to have a like a direct uh intake because we originally had a uh, chained intake, but the chain was like snapping sometimes, and also like we couldn't like really figure out a good way to protect it well and to get like the RPM we wanted. Um, so. Some challenge if we had with the intake is are that like originally um we had a different like banding pattern on the intake and like what that would the issue with that is that um like sometimes these rubber bands are too close together which would make inconsistencies and like the picking up like when the when the um rubber bands are closer together it would like push it down more but when they're farther apart um it's like easier to intake so we decided to like make the rubber bands evenly spaced apart to create like the most um like most consistent intake. So start wraps for a lot. Side, we talked about uh, some of the changes you made. Were those wings, as we mentioned a little bit earlier? But I'd love to hear more about what's gone into them specifically. Uh, those changes, and then more importantly, how they've been working out for you too. Yeah. So uh, originally, in the past few competitions, so at our last competition in the last week, we had a style of wings uh, where we they would lock with the standoff. So there was like a spacer with a zip tie, and then when we opened them up, it would push the standoff into the spacer, locking them, and that worked relatively well. But we felt that like the locking wings, they were, they were kind of inconsistent. So we wanted to always be able to consistently open and close them. So we decided to switch to a regular a regular wings without any locking. And it's been working pretty good for us. Um, at the edges of the wings, sometimes it can get a bit, a bit back driven. But we felt like that back drive was kind of uh, less of a downside compared to potentially not being able to use the wings during a match because of the uh, difficulties in deploying them. And then along with these wings that we have on the sides here, we also have a wing, uh, a back wing in the back on the back right side of our bot that extends downwards and we use it during aut autonomous mostly because these wings that we have in the front of our bot, they uh, ca they can't get past the match load triangle because it's too low. So this this uh, arm will lift over it and push the tribal out of that zone. Sure. So then we can use that to get the AWP and that's a really crucial part of the game this year. And then besides that, with our reservoirs, so uh, one problem that we had was that uh, the in, across the middle barrier, it was kind of difficult for us to climb over it. And we realized that that was because of our center of gravity being more uh, close to the back instead of balanced evenly. So we moved our reservoirs from around this area underneath our lift to one up in the intake and one down here. And that helped balance out our center of gravity and allows us to climb over the middle barrier, which allows to increase our maneuverability very like a lot and helps us a lot in our strategies in the match. Well, we'll frame this early, but you already had a, a great first win in your first match yep. already with that AWP as well, too. So uh, 293 uh, Z, good luck here, of course, at the Sugar Rush event. Can't wait to see you to do the rest season. Thanks a lot for taking time. Tell us about your team. We appreciate it. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Discover how Kettering University students engineer their success with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs where students earn great pay and gain valuable experience. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotics scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash vex to learn more and apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.